Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. I'm going to do a quick video here in the hobby series. Uh, I've created some playlists here, one for hobbies and I'm going to create one for uh, how-to series. Uh, but this one's an, another one in the hobby series. Um, so a while back I had a little project that I did and uh, even though it's a little after the fact I'd like to share it with you guys. I saw a lot of videos on YouTube about guys that were buying um, Mac Pro from 2009 up to 2012, specifically the 2009s, because they can be flashed to accept the same hardware that the Mac Pros all the way up to 2012, which is right before they made the trash can uh, Mac Pro. They could put the same hardware in them, and they could do it a lot less expensive than just going out and buying a Mac Pro from Apple. And at the time I did this little project, it was, you know, even doing the 2009, I didn't really have capital that I could throw, you know, $1,000 at a project or whatever at the time. Um, but I wanted to kind of tinker around with it. And, and going along with the Linux that I, that I use all the time, I wanted to play around with uh, a piece of uh, hardware that could be, uh, that was more advanced than what I'm presently using for my little projects here to tinker around with learning Linux and um, some of the other projects that I have that, uh, that I need a workbench machine for. So I found out that um, the 2006, which was the original Mac Pro, right after the Power Macs, um, the first hardware version uh, was a 1, 1.1 and that that model could be taken all the way up to Oh, well, not all the way, but it could be taken up to uh, 2 comma 1, which would then let it use better CPUs, more memory. Um, it's just a simple firmware flash. And so I did a little searching around on eBay. Uh, let's just do a quick search on Mac Pro. And, and, and I'm going to narrow the search down to 2006 models. Um, so I found mine. I, got, I stumbled across a pretty good, across a pretty good deal. Uh, I found mine for $99, and uh, the shipping was fairly reasonable. I don't remember exactly what it was, uh, but let's just look at some examples here. Uh, you can usually find these for $200 or less, and depending on what your budget is, you, you do want to consider the shipping. Like this one's only $43. Not too bad. Some of these things are, you know, they, they charge you $100 or more to ship them. Um, but you want to look at a couple of things. You want to look for the 2009. Um, you can when you get it you can flash it up to a two comma one which will let you upgrade the CPU and the RAM uh, if you're so inclined uh, but my my ultimate goal here was really not to run Mac on this thing I wanted to put Linux in it and I wanted to see how it would run on um, hardware that robust um, you also want to be careful when you're looking at the uh, the listings because they tend to and again I apologize if this is fairly basic for someone on eBay that, that surfs eBay routinely I don't so I discover that oh gosh well people are copying and pasting the original specs on these systems that's not necessarily the spec of the system that they're selling so I discovered you know just kind of became apparent to me that you have to really look at their description and not what they've copied and pasted uh, seeing numerous ones of the exact same spec kind of clued me in hey this is this is just a copy and paste of Apple's original system spec uh, not all the sellers do tell you exactly what you're getting. Like this one here is the 2-core, and it's got 6 gigs of RAM. Um, and so you really want to kind of pay attention to their descriptions of what it is rather than the original specs. And then they, usually they'll give you a little bit of information about why they're selling it or what have you. Um, but you can find, um, still, for somewhere between $1 and $200, you can find one of these guys and now this is not a system that you're going to game with um, that's really not an interest of mine um, if you're looking for something more robust to game with this is not really an option for you um, my goals here really were just um, you know doing some video um, re-encoding for my um, my home entertainment server. So I'm, I'm ripping my DVDs and Blu-rays down to files that I can stream across my network for my media clients. Um, and that, that is a really 
uh, CPU intensive operation. Um, it'll take every core the system has and just peg it to 100% for the encode process. Uh, and I use Handbrake to do that. Um, and that's you can kind of look forward to that in an upcoming video where we're going to talk about how we do that. But that was what really started driving this was I needed something with a little more horsepower for that need that I had in the CPU division. Um, Handbrake really doesn't tap into the GPU. It uses the CPU. So this, this, this hardware is perfect for it because you can find a nice multi-core system uh, you know that, that can really handle that and, and it does speed the process up quite a bit uh, plus the machines are uh, the cooling is so robust in these machines uh, when you when you run you know eight cores at hundred percent in any average machine they're gonna get pretty hot um, these things really do very well at uh, running cool even though they're working that hard because that's what their original intent was video editing uh, and for the professionals that are using Macs also, just kind of browsing around here, there's a there's a number of, of real viable options here. Um, if you if you look at the, you know what's in it, some of these guys even you know put upgrades in them, and you can get uh, an SSD uh, in them right from eBay. Um, so just have a little patience and look around, and you can find some pretty good deals. Um, for sure, what I what I decided to do was just to upgrade my um, hard drive. The one I bought actually came with no hard drive, but one of the greatest, uh, one of the biggest um, perceptions of how fast a machine is, is how quickly the storage works. Uh, an SSD over a hard drive, an NVMe over an SSD, um, you, the, you, you perceive the greatest change to your system's performance um, doing daily operations if you, if you install more advanced storage than just a rotational hard drive. And we'll chat a little bit about that. Now there are a lot of videos on YouTube that will tell you how to how to change all the you know how to change the hard drive and change the the RAM and the C, even the CPUs, which I did on this one. I changed my CPUs just for the fun of doing it. Um, after flashing it to a two comma one, it would take, and I don't remember the exact specifics, but it would let me put a more advanced CPU. I think it had four cores when I bought the machine, two two core. Um, CPUs and I flashed it so it would take the four core CPUs and now it has eight cores. Um, I was lucky mine came with, um, I found one with 16 gigs of RAM, which has been plenty for, you know, the projects that I've been doing with the, you know, the virtual machines and, the, you know, the video encoding and so forth. Um, so you want to look around at these things. And so here's the, here's the one that I'm, I'm running at this point. Um, and let me just show you a couple things about it. The interior architecture of the things are fantastic. Everything is is virtually toolless. Uh, there's really not a lot of cables to manage to mess with. In this case, there are none. Um, you know, you just open this thing up. You know, there's a little uh, lock indicator on the hard drives. They come out on sleds. Uh, so I put this uh, SSD in here. I bought the adapter. It's like twelve dollars or something. That will take the uh, two and a half inch SSD and let you bolt it in where a three and a half inch drive goes and then it just goes back in. No wires, got the SATA connector and she clicks right in. Uh, memory is very accessible on this uh, year. There are eight slots. Um, you can, uh, I don't remember exactly when you flash them. I think they'll take up to 64. It may just be up to 32. Um, again, a little Googling will show you that lots of videos on that uh, so I actually put Linux Mint in this machine and there was a trick that I figured out and, and, and interestingly enough I saw some people on their videos talking about um, the fact that although this machine's architecture is a full 64-bit architecture um, the EFI that Apple has in it even the 2 comma 1 is really just a 32-bit architecture so the challenge in putting a 64-bit OS especially a non-Apple OS in it was you couldn't just install it uh, the way you would normally install Linux because the the BIOS announced itself as a 32-bit so the, the distro wouldn't run. But one of the awesome things about Linux is you can just install it on another piece of hardware and then just take the drive and transplant the drive and all of the drivers will figure out, oh gosh, I'm in a new home. And it, it's remarkable how easily it, it gets along with hardware when you transplant it like that. That's all I did was I, I, I installed Linux Mint 
18.3, I think it is. Um, I threw it into another machine. I put, the, you know, installed the SSD there, installed Linux Mint, got it all working, took the drive out, threw it in this, and there you are. You've got 64-bit Linux Mint in a Mac Pro that was never really designed to run 64-bit, uh, at least the uh, EFI that Apple puts in there. Um, there you are. There you have it. There's... Um, there's a pretty good deal to be found still today on eBay. Now, I have noticed that the prices are going up. I think people are kind of tuning into this, and it's kind of the laws of supply and demand. Um, they're, uh, you know, they are they are creeping up. You saw some of them there for, you know, $400 for one of these things. Um, and and is it worth it? Yeah, probably, if you uh, if you have the right need for it. In my case, I was I did this whole thing for under $250. I bought the thing for 99 bucks. There was some shipping. I think the SSD was something like 50 bucks at the time. Um, I did put a little bit better video card in it, which, by the way, you won't see your uh, Apple boot up screens if you do that. So if you if you get an original Apple card with it or Apple um, compatible card, um, don't throw it out if you change it out. And you'll see a lot of guys on YouTube telling you that. Uh, there's more videos about upgrading the later models the five comma ones, the four comma ones slash five comma ones, uh, but a lot of guys will tell you, hey, don't throw this card out because if you ever want to see the, the post, you know the the power on, you know you know the boot screens, um, that you need to, you need the original Apple compatible card, and and the reason that's important is if um, if you're going to reinstall uh, Mac OS into the machine, you need to be able to select your boot option. It's not just going to randomly boot from the CD, and even if you know, you're know you using the keyboard shortcuts, you're not going to see it if you don't have the original card. So if you do upgrade the card, uh, hang on to the original. It's valuable should you make alterations to the machine later. Um, but yeah, this thing has been an awesome project machine for me. I have learned a lot more about Linux on it. Um, it's it's super fast, and I've just had a, a, just a ball with it. So thanks again for stopping by. I hope you find this interesting. And um, if you have a little uh, liquid cash you can play with, you can do one of these things on the cheap. And really, it's it's a really fun project. Uh, so best of luck with it. Uh, leave any comments. I'm sure some people that know a lot more than me will uh, give me some corrections on stuff I've done here. But uh, that's okay. It's always good to learn, even if you're finding out what you're doing wrong. Uh, as a matter of fact, you tend to learn the most by learning what you did wrong. I do. That's been my experience. Um, so... Thanks again. You guys have an awesome day.